Abhinavagupta c. Ad was a philosopher, mystic and aesthetician from Kashmir. He was also considered an influential musician, poet, dramatist, exegete, theologian, and logician, a polymathic personality who exercised strong influences on Indian culture. He was born in Kashmir in a family of scholars and mystics and studied all the schools of philosophy and art of his time under the guidance of as many as fifteen or more teachers and gurus. In his long life he completed over 35 works, the largest and most famous of which is Tantraloka, an encyclopedic treatise on all the philosophical and practical aspects of Kaula and Trika known today as Kashmir Shaivism. Another one of his very important contributions was in the field of philosophy of aesthetics with his famous Abhinavabharati commentary of Natyasastra of Bharata Muni. Life Abhinavagupta was not his real name, rather a title he earned from his master, carrying a meaning of competence and authoritativeness. In his analysis, Jayaratha AD, who was Abhinavagupta's most important commentator, also reveals three more meanings: being ever vigilant, being present everywhere and protected by praises. Raniero Noli, the only Sanskrit scholar who completed a translation of Tantraloka in a European language, mentions that Abhanava also means new, as a reference to the ever new creative force of his mystical experience. From Jayaratha, we learn that Abhinavagupta was in possession of all the six qualities required for the recipients of the tremendous level of Saktaputta, as described in the sacred texts Sripurvasastra, an unflinching faith in God, realization of mantras, control over objective principles referring to the 36 tattvas, successful conclusion of all the activities undertaken, poetic creativity and spontaneous knowledge of all disciplines, Abhinavagupta's creation is well equilibrated between the branches of the triad trika, will itcha, knowledge jayanana, action kriya. his works also include devotional songs, academical, philosophical works and works describing ritual, yajic practices. As an author, he is considered a systematizer of the philosophical thought. He reconstructed, rationalized and orchestrated the philosophical knowledge into a more coherent form, assessing all the available sources of his time, not unlike a modern scientific researcher of Indology. Various contemporary scholars have characterized Abhinavagupta as a "...brilliant scholar and saint", the pinnacle of the development of Kashmir Saivism, and "...in possession of yajic realization." Topic. Social background, family and disciples Topic. Magical birth The term by which Abhinavagupta himself defines his origin is, Yoginavu, born of a yogini. In Kashmir Shaivism and especially in Kaula it is considered that a progeny of parents, established in the divine essence of Bhairava, is endowed with exceptional spiritual and intellectual prowess. Such a child is supposed to be, the depository of knowledge, who, even as a child in the womb, has the form of Shiva. To enumerate but a few of the classical attributes of his kind. Topic. Parents His mother, Vimala Vimalakala, died when Abhinavagupta was just two years old. As a consequence of losing his mother, of whom he was reportedly very attached, he grew more distant from worldly life and focused all the more on spiritual endeavor. The father, Nursimha Gupta, after his wife's death, favored an ascetic lifestyle while raising his three children. He had a cultivated mind and a heart, outstandingly adorned with devotion to Mahasvara Shiva. 
In Abhinavagupta's own words, he was Abhinavagupta's first teacher, instructing him in grammar, logic and literature. Family Abhinavagupta had a brother and a sister. The brother, Manarata, was a well-versed devotee of Shiva. His sister, Amba, probable name, according to Navjivan Rastogi, devoted herself to worship after the death of her husband in late life. His cousin Karna demonstrated even from his youth that he grasped the essence of Saivism and was detached of the world. His wife was presumably Abhinavagupta's older sister Amba, who looked with reverence upon her illustrious brother. Amba and Karna had a son, Yogeshvaradatta, who was precociously talented in yoga Yogeshvar implies, Lord of Yoga. Abhinavagupta also mentions his disciple Ramadeva as faithfully devoted to scriptural study and serving his master. Another cousin was Kayasima, possibly the same as Abhinavagupta's illustrious disciple Kasamaraja. Mandra, a childhood friend of Karna, was their host in a suburban residence. He was not only rich and in possession of a pleasing personality, but also equally learned. And last but not least, Vatasika, Mandra's aunt, who got a special mention from Abhinavagupta for caring for him with exceptional dedication and concern. To express his gratitude, Abhinavagupta declared that Vatasika deserved the credit for the successful completion of his work. The emerging picture here is that Abhinavagupta lived in a nurturing and protected environment, where his creative energies got all the support they required. Everyone around him was filled with spiritual fervor and had taken Abhinavagupta as their spiritual master. Such a supporting group of family and friends was equally necessary as his personal qualities of genius, to complete a work of the magnitude of Tantraloka. <laughs> Ancestors By Abhinavagupta's own account, his most remote known ancestor was called Atragupta, born in Madhyadesa, Manasmirti circa 1500 BC, 221st defines the Madhyadesh region as vast plains between Himalaya and Vindhya mountains and to the east of the river Vinasana invisible Saraswati and to the west of Praya. Born in Madhyadesa he travelled to Kashmir at the request of the king Lalitaditya, around year 740 CE. Topic: Masters. Abhinavagupta is famous for his voracious thirst for knowledge. To study, he took many teachers, as many as fifteen, both mystical philosophers and scholars. He approached Vainavas, Buddhists, Siddhanta Saivists, and the Trika scholars. Among the most prominent of his teachers, he enumerates four. Vamanatha who instructed him in dualistic Saivism and Bhutaraja in the dualist, non-dualist school. Besides being the teacher of the famous Abhinavagupta, Bhutaraja was also the father of two eminent scholars, Laxmanagupta, a direct disciple of Utpaladeva, in the lineage of Trayambaka, was highly respected by Abhinavagupta and taught him all the schools of monistic thought, Krama, Trika and Pratyabhijna except Kula, Sambunatha taught him the fourth school, Arda Trayambaka. This school is in fact Kaula, and it was emanated from Trayambaka's daughter. For Abhinavagupta, Sambunatha was the most admired guru. Describing the greatness of his master, he compared Sambunatha with the sun, in his power to dispel ignorance from the heart, and, in another place, with the moon shining over the ocean of Trika knowledge. Abhinavagupta received Kaula initiation through Sambunatha's wife acting as a duty or conduit. The energy of this initiation is transmitted and sublimated into the heart and finally into consciousness. Such a method is difficult but very rapid and is reserved for those who shed their mental limitations and are pure. It was Sambunatha who requested of him to write Tantraloka. 
As guru, he had a profound influence in the structure of Tantraloka and in the life of its creator, Abhinavagupta, as many as twelve more of his principal teachers are enumerated by name but without details. It is believed that Abhinavagupta had more secondary teachers. Moreover, during his life he had accumulated a large number of texts from which he quoted in his magnum opus, in his desire to create a synthetic, all-inclusive system, where the contrasts of different scriptures could be resolved by integration into a superior perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Lifestyle Abhinavagupta remained unmarried all his life, and as an adept of Kaula, at least initially maintained Brahmacharya and supposedly used the vital force of his energy oyas to deepen his understanding of the spiritual nervous system he outlined in his works a system involving ritual union between Purusha as Shiva and Shakti. Such union is essentially non physical and universal, and thus Abhinavagupta conceived himself as always in communion with Shiva Shakti. In the context of his life and teachings, Abhinavagupta parallels Shiva as both ascetic and enjoyer. He studied assiduously at least until the age of 30 or 35. To accomplish that, he travelled, mostly inside Kashmir. By his own testimony, he had attained spiritual liberation through his Kaula practice. Under the guidance of his most admired master, Sambunatha, he lived in his home functioning as an ashram with his family members and disciples, and he did not become a wandering monk, nor did he take on the regular duties of his family, but lived out his life as a writer and a teacher. His personality was described as a living realization of his vision. In an epoch pen painting, he is depicted seated in Varasana, surrounded by devoted disciples and family, performing a kind of trance inducing music at Veena while dictating verses of Tantraloka to one of his attendees, behind him, two duty women yogi waiting on him. A legend about the moment of his death placed somewhere between 1015 and 1025, depending on the source, says that he took with him 1,200 disciples and marched off to a cave the Bhairava Cave, an actual place known to this day, reciting his poem Bhairava Stava, a devotional work. They were never to be seen again, supposedly translating together into the spiritual world. Topic. Works Abhinavagupta's works fall into multiple sections, manuals of religious ritual, devotional songs, philosophical works and philosophy of aesthetics. Here are enumerated most of his works. Bold typeface titles represent the most important ones. Topic. Religious works Tantraloka His most important work was Tantraloka, translates into, to throw light on Tantra, a synthesis of all the Trika system. Its only complete translation in a European language, Italian, is credited to Raniero Noli, now at its second edition. The esoteric chapter 29 on the Kaula ritual was translated in English together with Jayarathas commentary by John R. Dupuche, Rev. Doctor a complex study on the context, authors, contents and references of Tantraloka was published by Navjeevan Rastogi, professor of the Lucknow University. Though there are no English translations of Tantraloka to date, the last recognized master of the oral tradition of Kashmir Shaivism, Swami Laxman Ju, gave a condensed version of the important philosophical chapters of Tantraloka in his book, Kashmir Shaivism, The Secret Supreme. Another important text was the commentary on Paratrasika, Paratrasikavivarana, detailing the signification of the phonematic energies and their two sequential ordering systems, Matka and Malina. This was the last great translation project of J. Deva Singh. Topic: <tantrasara>, Tantrasara. Tantrasara, 
essence of Tantra is a summarized version, in prose, of Tantraloka, which was once more summarized in Tantrakaya, and finally presented in a very short summary form under the name of Tantravetadanaka, the seed of Tantra. Purvapanjika was a commentary of Purvatantra, alias Malanivajaya Tantra, lost to this day. Malanivajaya Vartika, commentary on Malanivajaya, is a versified commentary on Malanivajaya Tantra's first verse. Kramakeli, Krama's play, was a commentary of Kramastotra, now lost. Bhagavad Gita, the Samgraha, which translates commentary on Bhagavad Gita. Has now an English translation by Boris Marjanovic. Other religious works are Paratrisika Lahavti, a short commentary on Paratrisika, Payantapankasika, 50 verses on the ultimate reality, Rahasyapankadasika, 15 verses on the mystical doctrine, Lavi Prakriya, short ceremony, Devastotravivarana, commentary on the hymn to Devi and Paramarthasara, essence of the supreme reality. <inaudible> Devotional hymns Abhinavagupta has composed a number of devotional poems, most of which have been translated into French by Lillian Silburn Bodhapankadasika, 15 verses on consciousness Paramarthakaka, discussion on the supreme reality. Anuvavanavadana, tribute of the inner experience. Anuttarostaka, eight verses on Anuttara. Krama Stotra, an hymn, different from the fundamental text of the Krama school. Bhairava Stava, hymn to Bhairava. Dihasthadavatakakra Stotra. Him to the wheel of divinities that live in the body. Paramarthadvadasika, twelve verses on the supreme reality, and Mahapadesa Vimsatika, twenty verses on the great teaching. Another poem, Sivasakya Vinabhava Stotra, him on the inseparability of Shiva and Shakti, was lost. Topic. Philosophical works One of the most important works of Abhinavagupta is Isvara Pratyabhijna Vimarsini, Commentary to the Verses on the Recognition of the Lord, and Isvara Pratyabhijna Vivti Vimarsini, Commentary on the Explanation of Isvara Pratyabhijna. This treatise is fundamental in the transmission of the Pratyabhijna school, the branch of Kashmir Shaivism based on direct recognition of the Lord, to our days. Another commentary on a Pratyabhijna work, Sividstya Lakana, Light on Sividsti, is now lost. Another lost commentary is Padarthapravisa Nirnaya Tika and Prakankavivarana, Comment on the Notebook, referring to the third chapter of Vakyapadya of Bhatrihari. Two more philosophical texts of Abhinavagupta are Kathamukha Tilaka, Ornament of the Face of Discourses, and Bedavada Vidarana, Confrontation of the Dualist Thesis. Abhinavagupta's thought was strongly influenced by Buddhist logic. <laughs> Poetical and dramatic works Abhinavagupta's most important work on the philosophy of art is Abhinavabharati a long and complex commentary on Natya Shastra of Bharata Muni. This work has been one of the most important factors contributing to Abhinavagupta's fame up until present day. His most important contribution was that to the theory of rasa aesthetic savor. Other poetical works include, Gata Karpara Kalaka Vivti, a commentary on Gata Karpara of Kalidasa, Kavyakautuka Vivarana, a commentary to the wonder of poetry, a work of Bhata Tauta, now lost, and Dhvyanyalakalakana, illustration of Dhavanyaloka, which is a famous work of Anandavardhana. <laughs> 